Hey guys, it's Mouth here once again, and today I'm trying to show you that Trickster is actually pretty good for spellcasting, that Shimmerons are still very much usable and not com at all out of date in the current format, and that Stormcall is an amazing spell, especially factoring in Vile Stormcall, which destroys things, especially the short-term boss fights, which you see slightly later on in the clips of this video. But mostly, you just put down your marker of Storm Vile Stormcall, and it's going to obliterate everything on the screen. Uh, within the couple of seconds, it's active, thanks to the reduced duration uh, enchant and gem you're going to be using. These current clips are in Double Beyonded um, Asturi, I think, so tier 9, but Double Beyonded, and my god, does Stormcall just melt through all this, with all the sextants as well. Uh, XP was like a billion an hour over here, it's pretty ridiculous. So what we're doing here is playing a Trickster, using a Shimmeron paired with a Void Battery, and then running Stormcall. Stormcall currently has Spell Cascade on it as well, so every single time I cast Stormcall, I get three Stormcalls out of it, as you should be to tell, and then I'm using the Katava or Demonic Stormcall uh, microtransaction at the moment. Now, with a few of these little boss clips here, it's just regular at Siri. Basically, you put down your Vile Stormcall and all the bosses disappear. It hits extremely hard and it just constantly strikes around the uh, marker to provide a lot of extra damage on top of the regular Stormcall you're going to be doing. So, I get power charges in this build through Trickster with the on kill power charge effect. Um, as well as getting a bonus power charge. So with the Void Battery, I get up to eight power charges. That means Shimmeron gives you a lot of extra crit, a lot of extra crit multi, and the degen that it does to you isn't all that bad uh, because it was cut in half and then it, of course, affects you at this point, even if you use traps, mines, totems. Uh, but that doesn't really matter too much because with Trickster, you can easily circumnavigate that degen by having more regen than you degen, by having a few defensive measures like the Mana Node, which gives you reduced damage taken, like um, Wise Oak Triple Balance, which gives you a reduced amount of lightning damage taken, and then, of course, running a Law Weave as well. So the 200 damage per second that you should be taking from Shimmeron times by 8, probably around 1600, you're only taking 20% of that uh, to begin with thanks to your resists. You're then taking a lot less thanks to Wise Oak and the damage taken uh, reduction from the Trickster passive. And overall, it really barely tickles you. And that's with uh, just a bunch of your regen as well, which I've specced into on the tree quite profusely. As well as that, you can actually run two Shimmerons. Uh, it's just a bit more degen and that's totally doable. But for me, once I've got to this stage of my character, a Void Battery is going to be more beneficial because uh, it's just a bit less damage, but it's got much nicer cast speed and then gives you that other power charge. So if Void Batteries are too expensive uh, throughout the start of a league or something like that, then Shimmerons, just two of them, will definitely still be able to work in this setup and uh, work quite nicely. Uh, they are very worth using for the stats that they give you, the crit and the crit multi, and the degen is pretty negligible if you spec with the right um, ascendancy. Now here's an example of an 83 um, Vile City or Abyssal City, and here I just then swapped out Spell Cascade to try out Pure Increased Area. Uh, that's because I wasn't too sure I still wanted to use Spell Cascade for these deeper delves at um, Delve 330, I think it is. Primarily because um, I'm just not too sure you can tolerate the less damage that you deal with the three of them. But for the most part, I've still been spell cascading. I was just trying out the increased area versus spell cascade, and I think I still do like spell cascade more. I just don't use it for single target because for single target, unless all three of your um, storm calls are overlapping, it's going to be a DPS downgrade, and very rarely are they going to be overlapping. So this is the blue. Um, Harbinger MTX, which for some reason gives you much better frames. So even though I have a pretty decent computer at this point, uh, the Katava Storm Call, when you're firing off 10 Storm Calls a second, like I am in my build, does chunk at your frames a little bit. The Harbinger one, this one is um, a lot softer on the eyes. It also has uh, a much less invasive sound to it. Doesn't really chunk your frames at all. 
This here is an example of a tier 12 elder, the only real um, sort of boss fights I've managed to do so far. Damage was nothing too incredible there, but it was respectable. Uh, it is going to be kind of a variable with Harness the Void when you have the 5% chance to get 100% extra chaos. If you hit a few of those rolls on a certain boss, it'll probably die a lot quicker. And then over here, you pop your Vile RF and your Vile Stormcall, and that's what you're gonna look at for the next few little boss kills. Bosses being completely deleted by Vile Stormcall. I'm not too sure if that's gonna hold up into the tier 16 category and the Shaper and Uber Elder, but we'll give it a go once we get there um, tomorrow, and hopefully I'll have another highlights video of bosses for you to see there. But so far, so good. This has been an absolute pleasure. Probably my most enjoyable character up to this point with the right gear and the right setup. Stormcall has been just a blast to play, and I've really been enjoying mapping on this one. And then Val Stormcall is just ridiculous, so why the fuck not? So I'll go over the setup currently for this character and show you what I've done with it. So here is the character in its current glory. It's a level 91 trickster called MTX Salesman. At this point, it has taken me 17 hours to get to this point, and uh, I've done a few little endgame pieces, but no uber elders or anything like that. Now, the entire basis and idea around the character was to run Shimmerons because uh, they have fallen well out of favor with the public. They're like two chaos per shimmer on at this point, but that's still a very strong item. The thing is that you just don't really want to take that extra degen anymore, so people stopped using them uh, for their trap and totem setups, but they are still pretty strong. The degen really isn't that much if you build a little bit around it defensively, and it still gives you a lot of extra crit, which is quite valuable for certain spells, and then a lot of extra damage on top of that. And I did want to use two Shimmerons for this build, but like I said, in the end, uh, Void Batteries were currently about two exalts, and it was worth using a second wand as a Void Battery because it synergizes well with the extra power charge on Trickster, the extra power charge for Shimmeron, and then the fact is it could use a little bit more cast speed rather than just more crit at this point since my crit is quite healthy. But I wanted to do a Trickster for this build because there is some good regen, um, and damage reduction from this node over here for your mana and mind over matter does affect your um, degen and damage taken so it does help to um, actually prevent some of the damage coming in and then on top of that I wanted patient reaper to help sustain and help regen overall and then uh, of course swift killer gives you a bunch of um, chance to get power charged frenzy charges so it's really smooth for mapping plus one max frenzy and power charges as well synergizes with shimmer on and then just a bit of extra damage coming in here. So like I said, it will be a little bit RNG based because sometimes you'll hit some high rolls and get the 5% for the 100% uh, non-chaos as extra chaos throughout a boss fight. Sometimes you won't. So it can be a little bit hit or miss, but overall it should level out to just be a bunch of extra chaos damage. So that was the idea behind the build. And I tried to get a few uh, regen nodes like around here, 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 um, here and as well as that going for a dual socket for regen as well. So there is a decent bit of regen that you can see throughout this path of building. So currently you can see my current regen is a 450. I've also got some life leech coming in from um, the Warlord's Mark cast when damage taken, but you can also run it series flask. You can get some lightning leech in other places. Don't really need it too much at the moment. So life leech, not too valuable to me at this stage, but you can see my region there is 450. Uh, my total current degen is 280. So it's a net positive. If you then run a second shimmer on over here, you can see that the total degen is 490 and my life regen is about 100. Now that is without uh, on kill recently, I don't think. So there's a lot more while you're mapping, thanks to the trickster node. But uh, overall, it's manageable to do with two Shimmerons, but I'd prefer to have a Void Battery because you can see our damage does go up just a little bit, but our cast speed is tanked without the Void Battery. And uh, I'd much rather just um, have a little less degen, but a lot more uh, cast speed. So two Shimmerons, totally viable, especially if um, Void Batteries are too expensive. Two Void Batteries, totally viable as well. But you are getting to some pretty serious cast speed and a lot less crit at that point. And I'd rather do the Shimmeron um, void battery combo if you can get around it. So that's what we're looking at. We have 100, 115,000 average hit on storm call, cast rate of about eight to nine. So it's pretty respectable damage, something like, let's just say eight, 900K 
uh, Shaper DPS in our ideal situation at the moment. Pop your Vile RF a lot more. Using a Vile Storm Call, uh, kind of hard to tell exactly what that's going to do, but let's just say a fuck ton of damage. And uh, then I'll go over how I've actually built the character. Besides that, because I do grab the uh, area here, area here, do grab every power charge, and then mind over matter. So you've got a lot of mana, a lot of mana regen, and a decent little bit of life. So what we're actually doing with the rest of the character then is just trying to get a bit of life and some life regen. So let's say on the belt, you have increased life recovery rate, which is an elder mod. Uh, that does increase your life regen and your life leech rate and all of that. So it's pretty nice to be able to craft one of these with um, a metallic essence and a pristine. Just spamming those on elder leather belts, chances are you come across some pretty nice stuff. Uh, running a law weave because we want the 80 max res, though you could go a different route like an impulsor and then run a topaz flask instead uh, because the name of the game here is to try and reduce your shimmer on degen. So you could do a topaz flask, you could do um, purity of lightning, that sort of shit, but I thought just low weave is totally fine for that. Got ourselves a helm with reduced storm call duration, so before you actually get the helm, uh, there is a slight delay to your storm call, so as you can tell here, a little bit of a delay, and it does change your playstyle just a bit. Once you get the helm enchant, then your storm calls are basically instant, and it just smoothens out your gameplay a bit. So by no means do I think it's necessary, but it is very nice to have and definitely worth getting if you're going to long-term play a Stormcall character. Uh, you then, yeah, as always, chuck on some metallics and some pristines, get this sort of a roll over here. Chaos damage isn't particularly important there, it's just there because uh, got a little bit lucky, I guess. Other than that, got myself an Orb of Storms sitting in blind and faster casting setup. So it's also attached to Arcane Surge, Power Charge on Crit and Cull. So my Orb of Storms gives me Arcane Surge, it gives me Power Charges, it gives me Blind against the enemies, and it also culls. So it's a pretty nice uh, Orb of Storms um, against bosses especially. For the most part, you'll only really need to press it against bosses, but you should be able to see in some of the clips that you can actually just play in clear with Orb of Storms. So if you really want, your playstyle can just be to drop this shit um, against the weaker packs and run along because your Orb of Storms plus your Herald of Thunder is actually going to be killing things by themselves. The setup I have over here is for my Lightning Warp. So Lightning Warp, Swift Affliction, Less Duration and Faster Casting. I don't use it too often because I much prefer um, dashing around. It's so much more intuitive and responsive, but it is there just in case. Uh, I think you can actually get rid of it if you really want and put in some other sort of setup, but I don't really need anything else. Currently, I've also got Cast When Damage Taken attached to a Warlord's Mark, so I'm not that in need of this curse, but it is nice to have uh, just in some more dangerous situations. And then Increased Duration and Immortal Call. I then have Righteous Fire, which is Vile Righteous Fire, just gives you a large damage boost whenever you press it. Stone Golem, Flame Dash, over here is Herald of Thunder, attached to Clarity, and Onslaught, which will sometimes give me Onslaught, but it's mostly something I used for a leveling setup, and have just left it because it doesn't make much of a difference, it may as well sit there. Not too important though. Um, so a lot of our mana goes unreserved. If you really want to try and fit Wrath into the build, use Essence Worm, uh, but then that means you probably won't be able to use Mark of the Shaper, so unless you can get an Elder Essence Worm by chancing um, Elder Unset Rings, it's a 15x ring though, so good luck getting that happening. But I just went with a regular ring, uh, Elder Ring, a lot of resists, and a Mark of the Shaper. And importantly, I do also have fire damage to spells over here, because the way you trigger your additional regen on Patient Reaper, um, you need to have killed something that has one of your damage over time effects on. So we have a little bit of fire damage on our um, skill, which can come from a ring, can come from a jewel, an Abyssal Jewel, for example, just a little bit of fire damage, so you can see, small fire damage. Everything I hit and crit will be ignited. Everything I kill has a damage over time effect attached to it, and thus I always have that. So that's currently what the build looks like. That's roughly all I think I need to say. I do have a triple balanced Wise Oak as well, as always, for the additional damage reduction. So that's our triple balance. Um, but yeah, that's just for more Shimmer on Degen protection. And I will probably run an series Flask instead of a Quicksilver for some of the bosses. 
And then for my actual storm call setup, what it looks like is currently storm call, which has to be a vile storm call, lightning penetration, spell echo, added lightning, less duration and concentrated effect. That's for bosses. Um, usually I'm just running with spell cascade though. And added lightning over here is very up to your actual setup. You can run crit strax if you need more crit, crit multi if you need more multi, added lightning, power charge on crit, and ultimately you want Ellie focus against the bosses as per the setup in my uh, path of building here. For the most part though, I'm running added lightning just because um, it's easy and I do still want to shock things during boss fight, um, during just clearing. During boss fights, you probably won't be shocking. That's when you get Ellie focus in. So we'll untick Vile Righteous Fire. That's already unticked. That's just Vile Storm Call. Never mind. And uh, that's it for the character so far. It's pretty much a full guard at this point. I don't think anything's going to change except for when I fight Uber Elder. Maybe some things get discovered there. But so far, it's been incredibly smooth. Uh, Shimron, totally viable. Storm Call, incredible. Trickster, pretty good for spell casting. And uh, it's been rather deathless for most of the time. I've died like a couple of times in delves when I've run ahead of the cart and uh, died in darkness. Otherwise, it's been very smooth, very enjoyable. And I do recommend some storm call action if you can get the right setup for it. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video and this build, and I'll see you next time.